So I want to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about the, the finance industries and what, what opportunities, career opportunities exist there. Sean made the point that finance is 15 to 20 percent of GDP, but what's what's certain today, if we look back to when the Lehman, Lehman Brothers was still a company, is that finance is a smaller uh, s smaller portion of GDP. There are less jobs out there, and there are different sectors that, that are hiring than what than what used to be. So I'm curious, you know, from this panel of five, and and any of you. Feel free to jump in here. You know, where would you advise undergrads or MBAs who are interested in finance, but maybe a little agnostic as to what sector uh, they start in? Where, where, what area of finance do you think has the most uh, career potential or opportunity, if we can put it that way? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll go. I'll go ahead. I, I mean, I think there's there's always going to be a need for pretty much every role that exists in finance in some way, shape, or form. But there are definitely some that are shrinking and some that are growing. I, I would say that. Uh, sort of M and A as as we know it today is over the long haul definitely shrinking. Uh, it's just a it's a it's it's a less um, it's a less necessary skill that I think is more broadly available and a lot of companies have it internally now, which wasn't the case ten years ago. Uh, just from a this is my own personal perspective and Sean may actually have a better sense of this and I I, would, I think folks that are coming into sort of broader finance and want a relatively certain career paths should look at, at anything that's risk related. Uh, I think that there are, there's a massive opportunity and, and a very, very large need for people that have a clear understanding of, of what risk in finance is and know how to manage it. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the folks at uh, Lehman, JP Morgan, uh, Bear Stearns, wish they had had a, a much stronger oversight role. And I think that's, that's something that's not going to go away anytime soon. So what, specifically, what types of jobs are those? Um, I mean, I think oftentimes they're very quantitative. So folks um, that have math backgrounds and uh, understand statistics or have, have the ability to uh, really, really understand what's going on across, across a company. Uh, and it's, it's true both on a, from a, a trading perspective as well as just a, a, you know, the, the breadth of the size of some of these companies makes them impossible to, to manage. So it's partially general man management skills uh, and having sort of a macro perspective, but also uh, really understanding the quantitative side as well. And I, I mean, I, I obviously am not in one of those roles, but I, I think there are uh, many, many opportunities there. Yeah, I, I would agree with John. And if you think from a very high level, the cross currents that are going on just in the economy, you have the start of the baby boomers who are about to retire. And so tremendous demand for asset management and private wealth management. So literally just hand-holding and asset management for a bunch of retirees who just need advice and help with their portfolios. And you have the massive transition from just defined benefit towards de defined contribution types of retirement schemes, where demand for risk-taking and people who feel comfortable with risk-taking will continue to increase in my mind just because there's so many people out there who don't want to take on the, those types of risks themselves and want to outsource it. Um, so I think having an appreciation for both risk taking and understanding of valuation risk reward will serve you going forward. And in general, having a skill set that is well aligned with valuation and serving as a financial analyst, I don't think will serve you wrong. So if you learn how to value a stock, a bond, a derivative, that helps tremendously. And when I was starting out, just to give some context, the three books that I kind of consider the Bible of valuation, if it helps for those interested going into an investments role, are if you're interested in, Frank, in fixed income, Frank Fabozzi's Guide to the Fixed Income Handbook of Securities is kind of the Bible of fixed income. And Frank Fabozzi has edited a lot of books, so you can have it specific to mortgages or whatever asset class. If you're interested in equities and value investing, um, the Intelligent Investor and Securities Analysis in particular by ben Benjamin Graham are kind of thought of the, as, as the Bibles of value investing, and really thinking about equities and equity valuation and securities analysis. And then I use John Hull's um, options, futures, and other derivatives as it applied to derivatives specifically when I was starting out. And I think there's generally going to be a movement away from core products and into more complex securities and having a, an appreciation for Derivatives, yes, that would be nice. But anything, as John was saying, on the more technical side as it relates to math, statistics, et cetera, you're going to want to stand out, and that's one way of doing it. So let me ask you uh, more specifically related to, to jobs that exist. So at your firm, Sean, are you hiring more people this year or less people? 
Um, this year, it will probably be flat to potentially slightly down from last year, but that's only because my firm, uh, the firm that I work for, is mostly a fixed income firm, and there have been some recent outflows out of fixed income as an asset class. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that's endemic to the entire asset management industry. Mm -hmm. um, that said, we've come off the, the heels of uh, a pretty large pickup in hiring in our space, where the firm that I work at, so Frederick and I went to business school together and graduated three years ago. I would guess that our firm right now is almost double the size as it was when, we, when I started three years ago. So we're coming off the heels of tremendous growth. Um, and I don't think all those people who now work at this firm who are new from the past few years are going to be let go. There still is a demand for those people, just the pace of the growth perhaps has leveled off a bit. How about you, Matt? I would say at Goldman specifically, and I'm involved with a lot of recruiting, for investment management and private wealth, uh, the hiring's picking up. It's a group that they're trying to grow. Uh, trading volumes are down, specifically our, our FIC, what we call a FIC group, fixed income currencies, commodities. Um, those asset classes uh, traditionally, which were a boom, you know, during the 2000s, and many people say fueled the, um, you know, the boom during that time. Um, th those trading volumes are just not there anymore. So we're not really hiring many MBAs for sales and trading securities roles. Uh, it's mostly out of undergrad, and, and and those numbers are down. And investment banking is probably flat. Uh, I think it's um, it's a group that they've always recruited for. It's a group that uh, it's been pretty steady. They try to keep their numbers. Um, pretty average. Uh, it's a group that's never going to go away, but it's also something that they can't really grow too much more. John, why don't you speak for Evercore there? Sure. Um, I mean, Evercore has been very fortunate. Uh, bo boutique banks have taken a lot of market share in the last basically five years since the financial crisis started. So Evercore, uh, I mean, when I signed my offer letter in, I guess it was the fall of 2009, it was about 250 people, and now it's close to 1,000. Wow. Um, so it's grown tremendously. But at I think we've we have largely f leveled off as well. I mean, my my incoming MBA class was seven, and um, it doubled the year afterward. But it's been relatively flat since then. Mm -hmm. And I think that's we're largely true at the analyst level as well. I think at the analyst level, um, it, there's there's since there's a lot of turnover, and analyst programs are usually two to three years across the across the street. Um, I think that it's definitely grown tremendously. Um, you know, I think four or five years ago they were taking only five analysts per year, and now they're up to like 30. Um, I know this year in particular, since since we grew significantly and added a lot of senior uh, management, um, they've added they've ad hired a lot of laterals away from other banks. So we've hired you know new analysts coming in from other banks, but definitely recruiting. I think there's always going to be a need for legions of an, you know investment banking analysts to come and do M and A models at three in the morning. But uh, <laughs> you know I I think so definitely uh, at at the smaller banks I think. The analyst level is still trending up, but um, I think the bigger banks are probably about probably flat. So, Andreas, what's your perspective on private equity? Do you think there's there's more hiring? The large cap firms aren't really growing that much in their asset under management, and are probably going to be more flat than the middle market smaller or smaller cap funds are growing their assets under management and then the hence the need for more people is there so they're going to hire a lot so uh, when I when I when I signed for my firm about two years ago we we're about 20 people in investment on the investment team uh, now we're around 30 people and we're still going to grow that uh, this year as well so great and you're hiring people in Houston right we are yeah so apply so within Houston is, uh, <laughs> okay is growing significantly yeah.